Today's video is sponsored by DeleteMe. Most people are familiar with holograms, three-dimensional images created by lasers, which can capture an object in three dimensions instead of being like a two-dimensional photo. Full-color lasers can project a moving image onto a hidden piece of glass on a stage to recreate performances from actors and pop stars who are no longer with us. But there is one type of laser-generated imagery which can not only generate three-dimensional images, but three-dimensional objects in space, which can have very physical effects on the real world. From creating virtual flashbang grenades for crowd control, to guiding lightning or high power electrical current to a target up to 100 or so meters away, to creating fake radar images and heat signatures from jet aircraft, to trick radar systems and guided missiles, but a plane or missile might be actually only one of many, to talking plasma balls and possibly the source of recent UFO sightings that can apparently travel at incredible speeds and perform maneuvers and stops that are unheard of by any man-made aircraft. This is the world of laser-induced plasma. Laser technology was invented just over 60 years ago and since then has gone on to change the world in quite dramatic ways. All our modern communications of moving huge amounts of data over fiber optic cables around the world would not be possible without lasers. High power lasers can not only cut through metals and other materials and perform welding, ultra high power lasers are being developed to initiate fusion by concentrating petawatt levels of energy into tiny deuterium and tritium fuel pellets, creating conditions equivalent to that at the center of the sun where fusion can take place and a whole new energy source can be created here on Earth. And all this is with just light, the same sort of light you see everywhere around you, but there is a difference. Normal light is diffuse, the photons travel in every direction and can be made up of any color or wavelength of light. Laser light is monochromatic, meaning that it has just one wavelength and all the waves are in phase, meaning that the troughs and peaks of the electromagnetic waves all line up together. This means that a beam of laser light has very little divergence. A military grade satellite killer laser has a wider opening, which conversely creates a less divergent beam. If you were to shoot it at the moon, by the time it got to the surface, it would be about 2.4 kilometers across. If you were to point it at Mars, when it's at its closest point to Earth, which is about 54 million kilometers, the beam will be about 321 kilometers across. But if you use a lens, you can focus the energy down to a spot and greatly increase its power, just like a magnifying glass in sunlight. Also, the most powerful lasers don't run continuously. They only run for a very short period of time, usually from nanoseconds or a billionth of a second to femtoseconds or shorter. That's 10 to the power of minus 15 seconds, or one quadrillionth of a second. Doing this, you can pack a huge amount of energy into a very short space of time. And when you combine that with a focus beam, you can create such high electric fields that you can strip electrons from atoms and create plasma, the fourth state of matter, a gaseous mixture of subatomic particles consisting of ions and electrons, which is also an electrical conductor. By focusing the laser in air, a tiny packet of plasma or a plasma voxel can be created. This to us would appear as a bright point of light, although it only lasts for a billionth of a second or so, it would seem to last much longer due to the persistence of vision in our eyes. And if you fire thousands or hundreds of thousands of these flashes per second and move the laser around at the same time, you can create an image of a moving object in 3D space. The laser beam itself can be moved around with a galvanometer, basically two mirrors, one which controls the X direction and one which controls the Y direction. The technological breakthrough to control the whereabouts in the length of the beam where the focusing should take place was to use a linear motor to move a focusing lens. This would then determine how far away the focus point would be. With this setup, you can then position where the plasma will occur anywhere along the beam that it can be pointed and focused to. In fact, with some very high power systems in the giga and terawatt range, once a plasma burst has been initiated, 
The extreme heating of the air can then alter the speed of light in air and create a lens effect, which can then self-focus the beam. As the ionized gas heats up, it expands rapidly at supersonic speeds to produce a crack or a bang, just like lightning makes a thunder crack. The more powerful the laser, the bigger the bang. Lasers have been around for over 60 years, but it's only in recent times that these new plasma capabilities have been discovered, which is pretty much like the internet. It's been around since 1993, but only in the last 10 years or so that the collective data of you and I has been worth so much to the tech giants, which now make billions from the adverts based on our online browsing habits. But at the bottom of all this are other companies that feed this ecosystem with data about us that can be tied then to our online habits, which makes it worth even more and at a bigger risk to your privacy. These companies called data brokers buy and sell data, which includes emails, names, current and past addresses, phone numbers, age, occupation, and much more. And this is where the problem lies and where our sponsor, Delete Me, can help you. If anyone can buy data about you or your family, it can become a security risk or even a personal safety risk if you work in places like the government, the military, civil services, or you have a high profile. While you can request that these companies delete the data they hold on you, with over 750 data brokers around the world, where do you start? And this is where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me has been helping normal people like you and I get their personal information removed from data brokers since 2010 in the US, UK, and Europe. Delete Me is simple to use. You just select the plan you want, fill in the online application, and Delete Me will contact the hundreds of data brokers to remove you from their lists. You will receive regular privacy reports that show how much data was found, where it was found, and where it was removed. You can do this for yourself or your family and if you use the joindeleteme.com forward slash droid in the description below or scan the QR code next to me today, you'll get a 20% discount. One of the first applications which was thought up for this plasma technology was crowd control. Aim a laser beam near someone or a crowd of people and then initiate a series of plasma bursts to sound like a stream of flashbang grenades going off. Depending on the type of laser, they can be pulsed thousands of times a second, and by modulating the laser, it's possible to create an audio sound. This has sometimes been referred to as the voice of God, because it could target an individual, and a bright light in the air would be talking to them. The type of lasers used are normally infrared, so you would not see the beam, only the talking plasma ball. Stop! or we will be forced to fire upon you. In this example, the plasma recreates the sound of a verbal warning, but this is a very low power lab test. This was announced over five years ago, but so far nothing has been seen of this in public. But over 10 years ago, Japanese company Burton Inc. created a method that I mentioned before of steering and focusing a one kilohertz pulsed infrared laser to create plasma voxels for aerial displays. This could then create a rather crude moving image made up of these voxels, a bit like the huge orchestrated drone displays which we're now familiar with, but on a smaller scale. But if scaled up, it would certainly be something that could be seen over a much wider distance than just a few tens of meters. This is because it was meant to be a portable warning system for tsunamis that could be broadcast into the sky when maybe other forms of communication were no longer available. Now, try as I might, I couldn't find any videos that included the original sound of the voxels as they're being created. But from what I read, it's a pretty loud and unpleasant sound, with up to a thousand or more being created per second to build up the image. That would be a one kilohertz noise bath, which is probably the reason why they don't include it on the marketing videos. Since then, the Japanese University of Tsukuba has created fairy lights using femtosecond lasers instead of nanosecond lasers that Burton used. This is like a scaled down color version and creates smaller, quieter and safer plasma voxels that can be touched and interacted with without causing the more serious burns from the larger, longer duration laser systems of Burton. 
creating between 4,000 and 200,000 dots per second in frames with frame rates of between 30 and 100 frames per second. Now, whilst this tech seems not to have taken off in the commercial space, the military seem to have taken it and run with it, but are keeping it pretty much a secret. What we do know is the US Navy has patented a not dissimilar system that could be mounted on an aircraft to create fake infrared signatures as decoys. Using multiple systems could create something that looks like possibly multiple aircraft in infrared light, which can be seen on thermal imaging equipment to full heat seeking missiles. In theory, plasma is not dense enough to reflect radar waves, but depending upon the energy put into creating the plasma voxel, the supersonic shock wave that it creates will create a change in the air pressure that the radar can detect. This is because it alters the density and the refractive index of air, affecting how radio waves, which radar uses, to propagate through it, which it then can be detected. Now, with the observations of the Tic Tac and other unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, over assigned military testing areas in the Pacific, which have been observed by US Navy aircraft in visual light, infrared and radar, performing such high-speed maneuvers that defy everything we know about flight in air, might these actually be a highly advanced military version of what we've seen by Burton to create instant, incredibly realistic aerial decoys that look like real aircraft of whatever origin. And when you think that you couldn't do much more with plasma, in 2021, scientists in Switzerland used a high repetition rate terawatt laser on Mount Santis to create plasma filaments to guide lightning strikes. This is similar to using rockets which trail wire into a thundercloud to initiate a lightning strike. Using a laser, there is no rocket debris or wire to fall back to earth, and it can be fired as many times as you have power for the laser. This electro laser experiment was demonstrated on a smaller scale by the US Army in the mid 2000s to create plasma filaments close to a nearby target and then send a high power electrical discharge down the filaments to connect with it be it an object or a person. However, it now seems that an experiment in this field, which was known as Project Phoenix, was where the US Navy tested an electro laser against aircraft and missiles in 1985. And this was part of President Reagan's SDI or Strategic Defense Initiative. In 2017, Dr. Alexandru Henning, the lead researcher in the later 2021 US Navy patent, said in a piece for the US Navy's own IT publication that high power short pulse lasers could generate plasma filaments hundreds of meters in length and that the next generation lasers could create ones that are over a couple of kilometers long. And that would be possible to create phantoms or fake sensor imagery at considerable distances. At the time, Dr. Henning had been working on laser induced plasma at the Space and Naval War Systems Center Pacific since 2012. So it seems as though we might be either on the cusp of a whole new generation of laser generated phenomena, or it may already be here. And the UAPs could be the ideal way to muddy the waters and keep everybody guessing, whilst possibly testing it in plain sight. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching and don't forget to thumbs up, share and subscribe. And a big thanks out to all our patrons for their ongoing help.